Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, today what we're talking about is panic selling in Florida. Let me explain a little bit. So I ran into a couple of clients because the you know they asked some questions. They mm -hmm. want to know if the person could use my insurance inspection that I did for them a year ago for they're selling the home already. And I'm like, what's going on? And they were saying that they're in panic mode because they're afraid the prices are going to crash in Florida. And since they only put down like 10%, they don't want to have negative equity. So what? that's basically <laughs> okay. what they said. They didn't put a lot of money down. They, right, bought, it they, they bought it towards the okay. peak. Yeah. And they really, really feel that the prices are going to drop 20, 30% because some people are saying that in order for the market to spur up again, um, so I think it was Nick from Reventure App said it too. Um, he said five and a quarter, don't quote me on it, but five and a quarter rate needs to go down to five and a quarter and prices have to drop 15 to 20%. I guess they, you know, because I was talking to them a little bit about it and they're like, yeah, it's not only us panicking, but they told me about a couple other people that are panicking in the market. And I, I know for a fact there's panic selling when it comes to condos. All right, so before we move on to condos. So like let's get yeah. what, what, I guess my first reaction to that before we go on would be if they just purchased the home, my question would be uh, why year, are they selling? A year, year and a half, two years ago, because they, were, they came to Florida and they expected it to be one way and it's another way. Okay, so that's so, their motivation. Well, their motivation, I told them, are they staying in Florida? They're like, yes, oh. but but, <laughs> they, but here's the caveat. They weren't planning. They're like, well, we're going to give it another year try, but we don't, we don't want to take a chance of waiting another year and saying, okay, Florida's not for us, whether it's too much humidity, too much traffic, too cost insurance, I go whole list. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're like, if we wait another year and then decide that we want to sell, we're afraid that we're not gonna be able to sell and we're gonna be stuck here. That's their exact situation. So they wanna rent for a year. Oh. So yeah, they, they wanna rent because they're like, hey, listen, Hmm. We bought towards the peak. Right, yeah. And they're seeing prices of homes, like, in their neighborhood, mm -hmm. because they're closer to the water. Um, you know, a lot of homes are going up for sale because they're right next to the water, canal, front homes, insurance purposes. You know what's happening there. So they're like, hey, we, we paid a premium for it because they came from a northeast state, and they sold their house up there, and they came down here. And now they're just seeing price reduction, price reduction, price reduction. They think that if they sold, sold their home now, that they could break even. Still lose a little bit of money, but break even. But they think a year from now, they're going to lose equity. Then they're going to have to go to the closing with money, and they're, they're screwed. They won't be able to move. They won't have the freedom to move out of Florida. They'll be stuck in a situation that they're not happy with. That's the whole explanation. Hmm. But they're somewhat happy. Okay, so I kind of get it. They want another year yeah. in Florida to see, if, to see if they really like it or not. But they're afraid because of all the unsettling, uneasy things so, that are going on in the market. So let me, that makes sense. So let me ask you a question. Do you think in Florida, okay, you're the realtor, but you know I talk to as many buyers and sellers as you as an inspector. Do you think that there's panic selling going on in Florida? And then I'll give you my opinion. Well, yeah, I think so because, I mean, people are just, like not jumping forward to the condo market, but that's a whole different, I think that's yeah, a whole we'll, separate topic. Yeah, we'll but, talk about the condo yeah. market in a second, but overall, do you think that there's panic selling going on? There is some panic selling, but again, it goes back to motivation. Why are you selling the house? What's your motivation? That's why I was asking, what's their motivation? What's their reasoning? They if. You know, that's a dangerous game to play because we don't know what the market's gonna do. And I guess where I'm having trouble swallowing all of this is if the interest rates drop, how is that in our market? I'm not talking national. I'm talking just our market in okay, general. Florida. Because okay. that's where the example is in our market. So we have to look at it from our point of view, not somewhere else, or even Miami, where things are in a different position than we are here in the Tampa Bay mm -hmm. area. Um, what 
if because inventory hasn't really changed. Okay, that's a good fact. Okay. So, so inventory hasn't gone up, you're saying? Inventory's gone up because houses are sitting on the market longer, but we don't, the number of buyers to the number of homes that are physically constructed hasn't really changed significantly. Has it turned into a buyer's market? Or is it still a seller's market? If you can't answer, you it's, can't answer no, it. It's, it's, it really depends. So for instance, I just worked with a client um, this was a, another realtor, and you know, I had nothing to do with the transaction. I was just, I, I knew them. And they were, in, say, their listing just went up. It's a gorgeous house, because I wanted to go see it. It's a gorgeous house, and they were under, con they had five or six offers in like the first three or four days. Wow. And they were under contract. But the house is absolutely gorgeous. It's priced perfect. And it ended up over, they had uh, escalation clauses, so it kept, stair-stepping up in price. There was a bidding war on it? There was a bidding war on it. Wow, that's, that's really unheard of now. It, it really is. But let's take a look back at the, that listing that I had in Tarpon. I had it under contract in the first five where, days. Where, where we are now. Yeah, right where we are right now, right down the street. Okay. But the house was gorgeous. It, you know, we didn't have any issues with the roof. We didn't have any issues with Four Points Winds. It was remodeled. I mean, it was a good looking house and it was priced for what the neighborhood it's almost was too nice of a house for where the neighborhood was meaning that they over improved it because their intent was to stay but they ended up getting moved for work so they had to sell it so okay so so you're saying panic selling you could still sell at a reasonable price depending on the property from what i'm understanding what yeah. you're saying but you you think there is panic selling going on in the general sense of florida in Florida, yeah, I would say that there's panic selling going on when you're looking at the, the whole picture. But what I'm saying is I'm, I'm addressing more the whole, well, everybody thinks that because the national news said that the market's going to crash nationally for 20%, that that's going to affect our market here. And I would say that you would have to really pull the numbers and look at your specific market and then take that specific market point. and go micro and look in your neighborhood. Because you're saying one area might drop 20, 30, even 40%, while another area doesn't drop that much. Right. There's a couple areas in Pasco County that are more in the flood zone areas. The prices are dropping. They're because of insurance. Because of insurance. And they can't sell and they need to sell. So they're dropping their prices. It's a, like an artificial drop because they're just, they're getting desperate because they can't afford the house. Right. So, so do you think that some people are panic selling that really shouldn't be panicking? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If, you know, the the worst that you, the worst thing people could do is is panic. Don't panic. Take a step back. Take a breath. Mm -hmm. This applies to every aspect of your life. Obviously, you know I was a firefighter, and this is you know in an emergency situation, you don't want people panicking. You want to take a step back and right. make some rational decisions right. and take a breath. Right. And you know and the same thing applies in your day to day life. Like we take a step back. Take the time to call a real estate professional that you trust that can really sit down and look at numbers for you, for your property, your situation, and look at what the market trends in your area are. That's really, really important. It doesn't matter. I mean, Miami could be crashing in Florida, as an example. Jacksonville could be crashing. But Orlando's exploding and Tampa Bay's exploding. You know? So Tampa Bay real estate is exploding. No, no, no. I'm giving this as an example. Oh, oh no, you're no, saying no. You're, I mean, you're, you're. I'm giving saying examples. Examples yeah. of like one area might not be exploding while another area right. is. And then in six months, you could flip the coin and go the other direction. All right. But I look at like for us in Tampa Bay, look at all the new construction that's going on. You think these guys are building this many houses because they want to lose money? There is a lot of building going on, but some people are saying. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be the devil's advocate yep. here, okay? Yep. So some people are saying they're building them because they already pulled the permits, they already put the roads in. This is what some yeah. people are saying. But they're still selling. Okay. I, I mean, I'm I, at build I, centers every single day, like yeah. literally doing, whether I'm doing a video or talking to the people, and they're still selling houses. No, I, not I, at the rate we I, were. I have two yeah. new construction inspections yeah. tomorrow. I exactly. <laughs> so I, I totally, I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. But you know, what we're trying to do is there's so many negative videos on Florida and panic selling mm -hmm. that I wanted your opinion on it since you're actually selling them. I'm inspecting them. 
So, you know, because I see, I, the people I talk mm -hmm. to, I could tell you one, two, three, four, five people that are probably going to sell that bought recently because they're panicking. They're going, right. They're going to panic. And now they're seeing homes. See, they, they have buyer's remorse, too. Okay, okay. Let, let, me, let me tell you about that one, especially three of them. Mm -hmm. They bought a, the homes when it was hard to get a home. Right. So you paid a premium. You paid a premium. Everybody was paying premiums. People were like, point. well, I didn't, you know, I only bought a 1,600 square foot home when I needed a 2,400 square foot home. Right. Or I wanted a home in this location, but I couldn't find any, so I bought a home in this location. Mm -hmm. Whatever the reason is. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now they're seeing the homes that they wanted back then for sale. Right. Because they had to settle for the house because they needed a house. So that leads me into the next question. Do you think that people need to settle anymore on a home that is not the perfect home for, for them? That's a very tough question to answer, and here's why. What I typically see in the beginning is people want, they have this giant list of things that the house has to check the boxes. It's got to be all of these or uh, it's nothing. And then as they look, things start to dwindle down a little bit right or they'll compromise because like the kitchen is amazing but the backyard's a little bit smaller than what they really really wanted so but they make a compromise to it and sometimes as an agent we just kind of have to work through the process with the client because you, 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 and I get it, I do the same thing. If I was looking for a house, I want this, this, this. I got a perfect example in my brain of what I want to look for. But then if I walk in somewhere else and I'm like, holy smokes, look at that. I could give her, you know, you have to evaluate that situationally on what you're willing to compromise, you know, give and take for something else. Well, he, he, here's another thing that people are talking about and, you know, and people are telling me too. Mm -hmm. It's like, people want homes but they're waiting for rates to go down and rates are starting to go down, but it's a slow process. It's, it's not gonna go back to two, 3%. That's not happening. Okay, that's not happening. But I think they're waiting for, you know, the, the magic number I believe is probably around five and three quarters or five and a half on a 30 year fixed. That's, that's just my opinion, what I think. That's would, what it was pretty much at for 10 years. Yeah, and I think that's what people are waiting for, okay? But see, rates went down, not that much, but they went down and a lot of people did not jump into the market we don't want them to jump into the market that's why i'm really not thinking that you're going to see um at the next fed meeting where we're going to have this massive drop because if we have a massive drop number one you and i have talked about this multiple yeah, times, a lot of times that's yeah. going to indicate a huge problem and i agree with you 100 percent on that that it that's a that's a problem mm -hmm. if we have this massive yeah, drop and then the floodgates open in now and what's that going to do yeah. increase the prices it's going to increase the prices of the houses so there was just a report that came out. I literally have, I was skimming it at traffic lights when I was stopped. I didn't get to finish reading it today. But there was the, the gist of the report, and I'll, I'll dig into this a little bit more, but it was basically saying that we're going to have still increase equity gains in properties. And it was more local specific. Yeah, I mean, I just got one specifically for my area, and it was funny because eight months ago, maybe a year ago, okay, it was saying, 4.8% and then a month later it says 3.8. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I'm not talking about that one. <laughs> and, and, that, and now I got it and it said 0.2% again, but then it says 1% gain. You know, it's all over the place. So I, I you know. It's, sometimes they go, oh, okay, well, it's going to be your month over month average is, you know, point whatever, 1%. Your trailing 12 months is this. All I really, we won't, we won't know until the end of the year what the prices change to because the, what really matters and what everybody is, is hinging everything on in most of these things is the year over year. Like the, the actual, what did, what did we gain in 2024? Like how much equity did we gain in 2024 on a national level and then local and you could break it down from there. So also uh, another reason why a lot of people are panic selling right now is because there's videos coming out and they're comparing 2024 25 to 2007 2008 during the market crash okay if you go onto youtube or mm -hmm. anywhere and just google it i can't tell you it's the new clickbait 
there's tons of videos on it. I know, but it's how it would, I, to to watch that. I would have to go and actually watch those things to see what they were saying and how are they actually well, they're, comparing. They're saying because we have an inverted uh, yield curve, you know, and and uh, job market is not that great. They're making adjustments. It's uh, election year, so they're you know comparing to all this. It's like it, everybody's like. We are going to have a really, really bad end of 24 and the beginning of 25, no matter who's president. Right. And I kind of agree with that, but not to that extreme, but I agree real estate is going to be rough. Well, everything, I think, is going to be rough. And until market stabilizes with jobs and people are more comfortable, you know, the elections, it's just adding more uncertainty to what we were already at with uncertainty and instead of doing videos i mean i get it negative videos make a difference and we can throw stats together to make things look good or bad or indifferent i guess but well the reason you know. why we don't use a lot of stats in this channel so i can let everybody know is because um you can manipulate the stats Right. So you could say like medium home prices compared to the average home price. Right, because it makes it look good. Or you look at it this month from last month, it went down 6%, so it looks better than it does overall for a 12 month period. And so it, you can play the numbers. If you're looking at numbers, just make sure you're comparing apples to apples. You know, when we, when we make up our own numbers and we pull up our own stats, it's very raw data. It's okay, this is what happened last year. This is what happened this year. Black and white, A and B versus you know because we just i would rather know the real numbers it's kind of like when i'm doing a, an evaluation on a home i'm not looking at stats from a statistician point well i'm going to look at the median and this and that and the other i'm trying to look at what the value of the house is based on the history of the neighborhood right and i'm not putting any fluff into it it's just it's it's raw data right you know no uh, adjusted median so let's talk about condos real quick complete meltdown i think panic selling justify panic selling in Florida yeah if you're talking like Miami it's insane right now from what I understand if you're talking here it depends on where you are um, you know some condos townhomes are doing pretty good some most are doing pretty bad just because it's the days of those super crazy increases and the super crazy prices is over and these but the problem is that the, all these assessments aren't stopping. They're going to get worse and worse and worse as time goes on because the, how the, the condos are still getting older and those assessments, that's, you, you, you're not going to get, you're not running away from those. Right. And it's an unknown. So it's, again, it's another piece of uncertainty when you move into yeah, a Yeah. So what do you guys think? You know, you, you think all this panic selling, even not just in Florida, but where you are too, are you having panic selling? Do me a favor, comment, let us know if you're having panic selling. Do me a favor, if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing, it's greatly appreciated. And that's the end of this video. Check out this video over here. It's a really, really good one. Picked it out just for you and we will catch you on the next one. See you on the next video. Thanks. All right, bye.